Hello everybody and welcome back to the Kingdom Hearts 3 playthrough extras. For the next few parts we are going full on minigame mode. That's right, we're going to be aiming for high scores in all of the various minigames throughout Kingdom Hearts 3. So that includes Kingdom Dance, Flash Tracer, Ice Slider, um, Virum Rex Beat of Lead, i trying to remember what the other ones are. I oh, know there's... Is there any others? Let's see, I don't actually know at this moment in time. I feel like there's at least one more. What am I missing? Let's see. No, I honestly can't think of any others. Um, I'm sure they'll turn up as we, <laughs> as we go. I know that we're also going to be looking at trying to like to get the as many of the photo missions completed as possible. There's going to be at least one that will not be completed in this swathe of videos, purely because it requires a battle gate to complete. Um, so there's that. We're also going to obviously try and do well with regards to... Uh, completing the collector's goals, um, but that's not of importance right now. The way that these are sort of going to work is you're going to see sort of some not quite so perfect runs of these mini games. I mean obviously there's the ones that you saw within the main playthrough itself, but these are aim for the high scores, because obviously when you return you to these places you aim for the high score. And that reminds me, one of them is going to be a return to one of, or one or both of the uh, two, well, one one or two of the three Hundred Acre Wood mini games, purely because you've got to play them at least once after you've beaten the world in order to get it to sort of count as complete in your gummy phone. You got it. So since we're with Kingdom Dance. Basically, I can't remember exactly the score that you want to get over, but it is quite high. I want to say that it's at least 60,000, and it is a challenge to get there. I thought, oh yes, this one will be fine, but no, it is actually quite challenging in order to get the score that you need. The way that you want to go about this is you want to keep swapping partners as much as is physically possible. The higher the chain, the higher the score and that's basically what you want. I mean, as you can see, you basically get a thousand points for every single partner that you have, um, whereas you only get sort of 150, I think, for every clap? Yeah, 150 for every clap. So while they're useful, the claps, you only really want to do them if you need to to keep your combo going to get to your next partner. What you then want to do is sort of keep doing this until the end of the time limit, and then you want to sunwheel and just make sure that you get the uh, big finish at the end of the sunwheel, because um, that way you'll get the best score possible. You got it. Now, that is sort of all well and good, because you can get some uh, really good scores from this, however you just do have to make sure that you uh, finish the sun wheel to get all the points that you will have accumulated from this chain. The other route that you can do is you want to sort of uh, do the performance things around the arena and basically doing that you should potentially be able to get um, how many is it? I believe you should be able to get two sun wheels, which will allow you to get the big thing that you wanted in the end. So we managed to get an A rank there, which is brilliant. That is sort of the rank that we wanted. However, the trophy, I believe, is for 60,000 points. So I was about 5k short. Okay, no, it's not 60k. It's 70k. Yeah, it did take me more than a few tries in order to get this, and that um, particular 69,750 run was 
absolutely heartbreaking because I was so close. So very, very close. <laughs> and I will say it's, probably, it's pretty much the case with most of these mini games is that it's all about practice and getting them down near perfectly. If you can manage to do that, then uh, you should be fine with these. And they are they are fun mini games. They de they definitely are. But I will say that I did get slightly frustrated with this music after a while because while it's a fun piece of music, oh boy, it um it did began to drive me slightly nutty as I um, as I went through this because I had to do it that many times because I kept mucking it up. But this run was definitely going a lot better. Because as you can see, sort of I've still got another 30 odd seconds and I've managed to get myself over 25k, which I certainly was nowhere near at the last time, because I think I got to, down to the end of the points and that was how much I had. So it is all about clapping your weight and swapping partners as quickly as is physically possible. And you know, not mucking up your uh, not mucking up your selections. You've got a bit of leeway uh, in it, but really, you just want to really, really go ham. If you, I believe, can get over 40k before you go into the sun wheel, you're generally going to be pretty safe um, in terms of getting it. I mean, hey, if you can get over 50k, even better. And as you can see, I'm just sort of at this moment just going, oh god, please, please let this be the one. Because as fun as this sort of bouncy music is, it was just like, oh, oh my god. Especially when, you know, I started mucking it up there, I was just like, oh god, this is going to be the end. And then it was also just like, just, just, just keep going and just press finish with enough time. And uh, there we go. What's that point? Our point total at eighty-three thousand. I will take that because uh, that, my friends, is my trophy. You're not going to see the trophy turn up, but uh, that's definitely a trophy. <laughs> so yeah. You're going to see A ranks, you're also going to see trophy level runs. So that's sort of the main gist, because you do get you do get bonuses for getting the A rank the first time, um, but then not on the trophy runs. So that's pretty much where the difference go is again? going to be. And uh, I think I'm alright, Rapunzel. Now, in terms of the uh, Moogle photo mission that requires you to take photos of your companions, you do not need to take a picture of Rapunzel because Rapunzel doesn't count as a permanent team member and therefore you don't need to worry about taking a photo of her. Now, uh pretty sure that we can buy some fluorite, so we should probably do a little bit of levelling up on some of those delightful keyblades. But at this moment in time I was just sort of thinking, what do I need to do on the, the, the Moogle shop in synthesising things again? And just sort of going, well, try and synthesize as much as possible because then maybe that's going to get me another thing. Because, well, actually, no, that's, that is what I want to do because obviously I want to get the ultimate weapon. That's the goal. Or at least part of the goal. Um, I want to have the ultimate weapon completed and usable before I kind of completely finish this playthrough because, I mean, the ultimate weapon is glorious and I want it really badly. Like, I've unlocked it in every single Kingdom Hearts game, I think. 
No, yeah, I, ha I have. I'm pretty sure unlocked it in every single Kingdom Hearts game. Maybe not in days. Maybe not in, in Chain of... Or well, Chain of Memories doesn't really have an ultimate weapon, so that's fine. Um... I'm trying to think, actually, now. Well, either way, I've definitely done it in uh, all of the sort of major games where it has existed, so that's... that is good. Oh, it's Frozen Slider, not Ice Slider. Bloody hell. But, yeah, as you can see, sort of, I'm just like... Ah, oh, for God's sake. The other thing that I will need to do at some point is pretty much going to be, I think, right towards the end, is show off the final couple of shot locks that I will not have done by that point because I pretty much wanted to sort of 100% the gummy phone as much as was physically possible before I finished this and I certainly sort of went full belt for that so I'm totally down so uh, one of the things that I know we need to do is we need to go to the realm of the gods because we need to take a picture of Zeus, everyone's favourite god daddy, who really, really needs to keep it in his pants in actual mythology, because, uh, oh boy, he is, uh, pretty crazy. So yeah, I mean, these three parts is what it's going to end up being, uh, sort of just nice, chill times going through some of these sort of more unique things. And uh, it's probably not the best photo I could have taken of Zeus, but at this point I just wanted a photo of Zeus. And the other thing that actually I think we need is we need a picture of the forge, because that is another photo mission. So uh, we will go do that as well. Also, it means we get more of a chance to use one of our new Keyblades. So, uh, we're just going to sort of have a bit of fun with that. And uh, there is the wonderful frying pan. This is the thing that you should use as a shield and use it to sort of, you know, blow back attacks at the enemies. I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to use it as a bloody frisbee. <laughs> Because, you know, that's just how I roll. <laughs> but what is nice is obviously I have just managed to uh, get into a fight to be able to use the finish command, which is basically just slamming a massive frying pan down into the area. But also, there's so much fruit that goes on in this. It's ridiculous, but hey, honestly, I do quite happily live for the crazier Kingdom Hearts Keyblades because they're just really unique weapons. And they're all generally really quite exciting and different to use. Unlike, you know, the ones in Union Cross, which, while they look different, all act exactly the same. I mean, to be fair, pretty much all of the Keyblades previously have acted the same. It's only been this game where, really, they've made a sizable difference in terms of the gameplay style, rather than just the general, I'm hitting you with a stick and using a bit of magic. It's all, it, That side of things, it's all been based on the length of the keyblade, its physical strength and its magic strength, that's all that's mattered. Whereas obviously here it is all to do with the special attacks as well as all of those things, which does hey, just make it a bit more exciting to experiment with new keyblades. And it's also why I am really, really looking forward to seeing what happens with Oathkeeper, which I believe is I think, coming as free DLC later down the line. I know that there were a bunch of Keyblades that were pre-order DLC exclusive. Um, 
technically I got one of those, but I never use it because I never download the code, which was the Amazon Keyblade, which was like yellow and green. And then there was one for PlayStation and one for Xbox, I think. But I didn't get any either of them, and to be honest, I don't really care. I, I had more than enough fun with the uh, Keyblades that I had. So... <sighs> With that done, we're going to move on to our next minigame. And this is Flash Tracer, which the first one that we're going to see is basically exactly what you um, played the first time round. It's just that obviously you're aiming for some damn damn good high scores, whereas the last time it wasn't really about the scores whatsoever. Now I believe that you can access these things whether you are in the garage or out in the town. And uh, oh hell yes, there is my ultimate weapon that I so want. So we've still got three Oracalcum Pluses to get. I can tell you now one of them is located in Frozen Slider. Um, I'm Pretty sure one of them is located out in space with the gummy ship. Also, we can finally get a Save the King! We're getting, going to go straight for Save the King Plus, because you know. Go for the better weapon, it just makes sense. Um, I'm trying to remember where the other Oracle Pluses are. That we're missing. Hmm. Huh. Well, either way, we'll we'll find them. Cause I will be uh, slightly crazy. But yeah, with the flash tracer, what you want to do is you want to speak to Fred first, um, because he will allow you to tackle the initial flash tracer course which is entirely the one which is um, what you did before. And I will say this one is pretty much all about speed. Obviously, you want to hit as many of these rings as possible. Making sure you have glide equipped is an absolute godsend. Making sure you uh, sort of dash and stuff. Even though you will be using flow motion, you don't want to spend too long on anything. And when it gets time to killing Heartless, kill them as soon as is physically possible because otherwise, you know, your timing will be pretty bad. Unless you don't actually have to kill them like that, where you can just sort of move onwards. Also, you definitely want to try and get the bigger rings wherever you can. And, yeah, you just want to know where the hell you're going, because, honestly, it's very easy to get slightly disoriented uh, whenever you're going through this. So you do just have to be a little bit on the ball. But if you sort of just follow the route that I take here, you should, keyword should, be A-OK -okay with getting the high score that you want. I believe for this you just need to get an A rank on both of the courses in order to get the trophy. So that's good. But yeah, as I said, the main thing is all about speed. So as you can see, I've been really, really very sloppy with aiming for the rings. Obviously doing my, my best where I can, but basically you really, really, really just want to get there in as fast a time as is humanly possible. Uh. 
I can't remember exactly what the uh, time scale is that it specifically requires if you uh, want to be really successful. I think you want to try and get it in under 2 minutes 30. Or might be 2 minutes 40. We'll see in a second exactly what I ended up with. Okay, so you can go slightly over 2 minutes 40, but pretty much that is where you want to be. If you want to stand a good chance of getting that A rank. Because that time bonus is really quite important. So as you can see, 61,800 points, and that lets me my A rank! So that's all of that, and uh, completing that one means that we get a second course, which is really quite exciting. Now the second course is definitely more challenging to get that high score on, but it is definitely still possible, it's just all about learning your route, making sure you know where you're going all that good stuff. I believe that you access this one by speaking to Gogo. Might be Hero. But basically you've got to have completed that first one first before they will even let you touch the next one. Which I mean makes sense, even though you have already beaten it. But yeah, potato potato. Obviously no one says that. Why would you? But as you can see, it has just dumped me out in the city for no good reason. This is where you would find Fred if you decided to run about, you know. Which, I mean, it's nice that you can, you know, access the minigame wherever you like. Part of me thinks that actually it would have been a nice quality of life feature if you were just able to access these things from like the world entrance menu or just from the gummy phone so like you could just go select I want to do flash tracer automatically get in and do it that way just because obviously it would just make it a lot quicker and obviously I'm all about trying to do things at least somewhat efficiently. Hey, Sora, you wanna... So, uh, yeah, no, we don't want to do your flash tracer run, but uh, I do want to take a picture of that star. It's the one star in the night sky. And that is another photo mission complete. Um, I did get slightly confused with one of the missions in here, which is to take a photo of the wind socks. Um, but basically, it's just one of sort of like the massive air turbine type things in the air. That's what it means by wind socks, not your more typical idea of what a wind sock is. Which I mean is literally just you know one of those. Hey, Sora. Long-tailed, windy things, which you, you tend to see more like it's like fish that you tend to see as a windsock in Japan. I feel, but that's not what it's actually referring to. <laughs> So yes, let's move right on into Flash Tracer Mission 2. So this one's quite fun in that we, you know, get to do a little bit more of flying on the back of Baymax. You're going to be wanting to do the aerial dodge or, you know, as should be quite accurately, doing a barrel roll in order to quickly switch sides in order to hit the rings. And also make sure that you hold that R2 button down like there is no tomorrow so that you can destroy as many of these things as you go.
you're definitely not going to hit everything, no matter how much you try. Um, but if you can hit as much as possible, then it gets yourself off to at least a good start on this mission. But yeah, they do quite quickly throw you into uh, a lot of sort of varied movement, but this is where Glide is going to come into its own, really. And right here, Thundaga the hell out of everything. And um, yeah, where possible, Glide literally everywhere because it's going to do you the best possible thing you can get in terms of score. Now you don't actually need to murder the uh, Heartless there. I thought you sort of did, but you, you really don't. And there are actually multiple routes that you can take um, to go through these things. Which is fun. It is nice. I will say that it's definitely a little bit confusing knowing where you go with these things. Also because like these things move so ridiculously and for some reason this thing sort of makes sure that you have to go to the end before you're able to jump off, even though all the Heartless turn up over here. But I'm going in for the Smash and the Thundaga. And thankfully, I was facing the right direction to uh, continue forward. Now, this bit, you do have to try and hit as many of these things as you go up as physically possible. But do not be too worried about it, because at the end of the day, your key thing is, once again, it's time rather than rings and data count that will... Uh, win the day but also um, using the magic carousel can be really helpful for very quickly destroying these enemies if you manage to get it try and keep it until you get up here and then just ride it out all the way to its conclusion because it is honestly quite a challenge. And it's also why you want to have a high ether or something on board, because, uh, oh boy, it can be rough. But yeah, if you can get to 65,000-ish by the time you get to the end, then that will give you enough to get over the 80,000 points barrier that will get you the A rank, and uh, that nets is another trophy, not you know you're going to see it. So uh, that is both Kingdom Dance and Flash Tracer done and dusted. Which does make me feel very happy because it's, you know, it's a success. Um, but yeah, I wasn't going to make you sit through failed takes of that because it you're just sort of effectively seeing the same thing again, but there's no real difference in the tactics, I suppose, and also it's two different courses, so it takes off about the same amount of time as doing two run-throughs of the Kingdom Dance minigame. So, with those done, it's just a case of sort of wrapping up everything that we really can do in San Francisco. I just want to get those final... Uh, photos taken that I need to. Annoyingly, my brain's going, right, where are the wind socks? And not really realising that the wind socks are the things yeah. up here. That's what it's referring to. So, I am going to go turn it today, because that is something that I felt I needed to do. Oh no, I was going to the, the lanterns, because I was thinking it was talking about the lanterns. It's, it's not the lanterns. Slash, we're also going to the save point to go into the day, because I thought I needed to go into the day. I might need to? I'm not really sure, to be honest. 
But either way, and also I do still really love the whole Keyblade Hero 3 thing, even though, you know, Donald and Goofy don't wield Keyblades, but hey, who really cares? There's three of them and they got a Keyblade wielder. And they're all heroes. So it works out. It's just like Big Hero 6. On, the six of them and they're heroes, but none of them are particularly big, but they're big together, and that's what's important. And I have to, I'm sure John's Fashion Centre does incredibly well. But <laughs> I'm not sure I trust someone who names their fashion company or their fashion store John's Fashion Centre. It just sounds at least somewhat suspicious. You better stay downtown. <laughs> Could get lost. And here I think I Let's finally realised, oh, it's it's these things, and yeah, so I could have gotten that earlier. But hey, at least we got that picture. Yeah. So now we just need to fly all the way back to the save point, because of course... And I don't believe, I don't believe, I do believe that we still need to take a picture of Baymax. So, I think I will be doing that just before we end the part. But it depends exactly... Oh, yeah, so I was just like, no, I'm done with the world, and then I was just like, oh no, wait. I still need a picture of Baymax, and it needs to be Baymax in his combat outfit, not Baymax just standing around, because the whole thing is them pulling off their unique um, animations. So yeah, I just sort of ended up Kind of really dropping the ball at the end of this part, just going, I don't know what I'm doing. Because, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I thought I needed to go get him in the garage, and, and no, that, 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 I don't think actually counts. And, yeah, I just feel... I feel ready to, uh... Move on to the next round of mini games right now, but first we do need to just, you know, get that picture of Debbie Max. I think the reason with this one is that. Are you taking my picture? Yeah, n n no, Hiro. I'm taking Baymax's picture. But because I don't know who. I don't know. Because I don't know which Baymax is our Baymax. It doesn't count, so we need a picture of our Baymax in his compact gear. So I did remember, and uh, yeah, that is indeed how we're finishing this. With a little picky, with our mate Baymax. I can tell you right now, my friend, I am very satisfied with my care. Come on, fellas! So, uh, come on, you big cuddly Would balloon. You want to take my picture? Thank you kindly. We're done. Let's get to a save point and hook it on out of here. Yeah. More mini games? Oh, wait. <laughs>